Good morning. Today's theme is about future leadership. And it's a bit early in the day for the average student, so I hope you're all awake. <laughs> because I'm going to tell you a story, a personal story, my own story. And it's a story about opportunities and making the most of them. It's a story about future and how you can shape yours. I started here in Rotterdam during my days as a student, my own business, and ending up Minister of Finance amidst the largest financial crisis since the Second World War. And I'm going to tell you about that today. I started being an entrepreneur already actually at the age of seven or eight. I traded my own toys. It seemed like a good idea to sell my toys rather than they got a dust in the attic. And soon after that, I became, began buying toys from other people and resell them. And that increased a little bit, so I earned a little bit of money. So when I was a student here in Rotterdam, very soon I started my own company, in you know, my first year here in Rotterdam. And I looked at opportunities, and looked at the opportunity of, that presented themselves at that time. And I read in a magazine, an American magazine, I read about multimedia. It appeared to be the next big thing in 1990. So I started, together with a friend, I started my company in the attic of the student dormitory. I started designing, developing and building our own kiosk systems for retailers, retail chains. And at one point in time, we were the largest supplier in the Netherlands at that time. During, I already was student, still I was student at that time. And at one point in time, the director of our largest customer, the biggest book retail chain in the Netherlands, asked about something I also read about and looked upon, the internet, Amazon, she charted in 1994 its online bookshop. And he asked me at that time, can you also build something like that? And without hesitation, I immediately answered, oh yes, of course we can, of course, no problem. And then he said, how much would that cost? And, well, we never, of course, nobody did in the Netherlands build anything like that before. And he said, well, because I only have a budget of 60,000 guilders. For a student at that time, 60,000 guilders seemed like an awful lot of money. So I, I think I, have, I said, I have to think, I have to calculate, well, I, it will cost you 60,000 guilders. So we started building that. And from then on, my company grew into ISM e-company in Rotterdam here, from two people on that attic to about 200 people. And at that time, a new opportunity presented itself to me. The, the Prime Minister in 2007 asked me to join his cabinet, become State Secretary for Finance. And well, as an entrepreneur, like other entrepreneurs, I had a lot to complain about, the tax administration and the customs administration. So I said, yes, I'm going to do that. I did have to think about it because it is a big step from being an entrepreneur, leave your own company and become involved in something completely new into politics. But I did do that and it was very interesting because from then on, it was like a roller coaster. I started in 2007 in February as a state secretary, but three years later already at that time, amidst the financial crisis, I was asked to become Minister of Finance because the cabinet fell, and the labor ministers resigned, and amidst the financial crisis, I was asked Minister of Finance. And again, I said, Yes, I'm going to do that, without any hesitation at that time, 
because I knew we had to act swiftly. And I immediately started, already as in that caretaker government, I already started reforming the government finances because I knew that amidst a sovereign debt crisis, you have to start with your own government finances first. Was it easy to make that switch, to start? Was it easy to start from an entrepreneur to becoming, say, Secretary and Minister of Finance? No, it was not, actually. I had to, um, well, adapt, you could say. I had to adapt. I remember very, very well my first day, my very first day. It was a bright, sunny day in February 2007. And my driver, the very first day, left for home to bring me to home. And he carried a very big, heavy bag, like workmen carry their tools in. And I asked him, so what are you going to do for the weekend? Or what use do you have for that bag? He said, it's your bag. I said, well, <laughs> what's in it? He said, I just carry it. And I, you get every day, you get such a bag. So <laughs> then I opened it. And it was a lot of information and a lot of decisions asked from me by my civil servants. Due the next morning with all the decisions. So that's how a minister and ministry works. But of course, with the experience of an entrepreneur, I also took the new opportunity. And now we are going to replace that big bag by a neat little iPad, much more efficient. It just happened, it just appears that I was just by coincidence, it was a series of coincidences that I was just the right person in the right time. But you can shape your future. You can make the best of the opportunities. It worked for me and it also can work for you. I'm totally convinced of that. So for me, future leadership means Seize every opportunity. Make sure that you are in the right place at the right time. And always take the initiative. Thank you and have a very good day. Thank you, uh, Minister De Jager. You, you talk about seizing opportunities. How to recognize a good one? Well, that's difficult. I think by intuition. Okay. So if you don't have that, <laughs> well, you too can, bad. You Do something develop. else within the no, company. No. I think everybody has intuition. Okay. You just have to develop it. Okay. Do you think uh, future leaders will be doing something different from leaders of this generation? Do you think they should do something different? Yes. I think um, a lot of things, of course, obviously. Okay. You have the floor. I think um, it should be, um, first of all, I think leaders should be much more transparent and open in their motivations, why they are making the decisions. It's obviously very difficult. Also today we are making very difficult decisions. Even a majority of the people in the Netherlands, for example, oppose decisions by um, financing other Euro countries in order to maintain stability. And that's why we have to be open and transparent why we are doing that. I think we can improve on that. And it, for example, also the technology side, being an entrepreneur myself, is from an IT background, um, I saw a lot of things could be improved from that very big bag to the very um, quick and swift uh, information to the iPad. In the Council of Ministers today on Friday, I'm by far the best informed minister because when something happened one minute before, I have it with the advice and the information of my civil servants. So I can blow away a lot of other people that do not have that information. They haven't caught on yet, huh? No, the, I'm, I'm, at the moment, I'm one of the, one of the few that has, they have the system. Okay, that's great. Well, I want to thank you very much for being here. I know you have to run, uh, and, and I'm sure you'll all understand that the minister is not able to spend the entire day here, that he's got a few other things on his agenda. But we are very fortunate that you were able to, uh, to come and talk to us about your own life before politics. Okay, thank, thank you, you so much. Thank you. And have, have a great day. day. Have a good day.